As we continue approaching the devastating end of the 3DS eShop, I'm sure we've all had Pokemon Bank and Bridget on our minds. And it got me thinking of all the other characters that we end up meeting in the spin-off storage games of Pokemon. When it came to the big discussion of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire character redesigns, I still kind of regret not mentioning Bridget, because she kind of technically counts as a Hoenn character, but also not really. So we first saw Bridget in Pokemon Box, Ruby, and Sapphire. This was a Pokemon storage system for the Nintendo GameCube. I won't be saying too much about this game until I get the chance to play it myself, which with that price tag, it probably won't happen for, for a long time. The point is that Bridget was a character guiding us through the world of Pokemon storage in Pokemon Box, and would later reappear in Pokemon Bank, the new era of Pokemon storage and transfer at least until Pokemon Home. Both designs are really the purest embodiments of the Pokemon character design philosophy changes over time. You see it most in the shapes and proportions used between each, specifically in how her face is drawn in each version and especially in the thickness of her limbs. Even though her hairstyle has the same shape in the front, her later look has it grown out which gives her an overall rounder shape as do things like the jacket over her shoulders and even her shoes. Again, it all comes down to Pokemon as a whole migrating toward rounder shapes over time. She does still wear white though, going from a turtleneck sweater to a dress. This is probably to make them both look sleek and futuristic, going well with and even standing out against the green backdrops that we normally see her in front of. And of course she used to be shown holding a Hoenn Pokedex, well now she seems to have a badge on her coat. I believe that this is a card meant to keep track of Pokemiles that you would earn from transferring Pokemon in. I've always found it interesting when Pokemon creates characters like this for a side feature in their franchise. Like, not even a full game. It's a cool way to keep everything connected and give a little bit of flavor to what would otherwise be a series of menus. And they didn't stop with just Bridget because we would eventually get My Pokemon Ranch on the Nintendo Wii. This was a Wii Rare game that is nearly lost to time unless you had the foresight to download it on the Nintendo Wii Shop before it shut down. This was a game where you could play with Pokemon and receive gift Pokemon from Haley, the caretaker of the ranch. She's got a lot of stereotypically southern attire, the plaid shirt, vest, bandana, hat hanging around her neck. Pretty interesting, though it's also consistent with how the Pokemon breeders looked in Diamond and Pearl, as this game was released during the fourth generation. Feels kind of odd to say that I don't think this design is very deep, all things considered, because she is one of my favorite obscure Pokemon characters. The most fascinating part about her is that she's shown holding a Wii Remote. This isn't really immersion breaking or anything, as we often see Nintendo consoles inside the Pokemon world itself. But it is strange because we normally see Haley outside with Pokemon and not inside next to a Wii console. Again, it does relate to the game that she originates from and even works as an advertisement for the Wii. But it's still such a weird thing to include in her key art. We have yet another character who did in fact receive a redesign with Professor Burnett, though she is a character I ended up including when discussing Pokemon Sun and Moon, mostly because she appears as a more important character in the actual core game. Though it is true that she originally made her debut in the Generation 5 spin-off game Pokemon Dream Radar. There she was conducting research into an unknown space, so she was all suited up for the occasion. But now residing in Alola and not necessarily in the field, she has a more casual look, even getting a tan from the Alolan sun. Pokemon Dream Radar was an interesting entry on the Nintendo 3DS, utilizing the camera and gyroscope to catch the Ethereum forms of Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus. I'm bundling this together with the rest of the storage games because it's a Pokemon game that exists in canon with the main series, and allows you to transfer Pokemon out of them. Also, it fits the theme of a game with literally one human character meant to serve as our guide, which in case you couldn't tell by now is a loose theme tying this video together. But hey, speaking of loose transitions and Generation 5, this is also where we meet Fennel, a researcher of Pokemon Dreams. She did appear in the base game of Pokemon Black and White and pretty early on at that. She was also the character who introduced us to the Pokemon Dream World, a browser-based game that we could send our Pokemon off into for a little fun adventure and bring back Pokemon with their hidden abilities. I do love that because this game was playable on the larger screen of the PC, we get to see some extra art of Fennel. These gave her some additional poses and facial expressions for when she would relay information to us in this now defunct game. Fennel herself has a nice design. She has very long hair that reaches all the way down to her calves and wears a lab coat keeping it buttoned up. Very different from the other professors we meet in Pokemon who normally wear it open. These give her a very elegant, almost dreamlike appearance. And noticeably, one of the other characters we meet in this game with very long hair is Caitlyn, who also owns Psychic-type Pokemon and has a theme of dreams. Fennel also wears a pink shirt, shoes, and a flower hair clip that's meant to reference Musharna, the Pokemon powering the dream machinery and the subject of her research. 
With Pokemon Bank coming in Generation 6 and lasting into Generation 7 reintroducing Bridget, we didn't see many other characters like this until it was finally time to introduce Pokemon Home, the newest form of Pokemon storage. And with a new age of technology, we need a man of the future and that came in the form of Grand Oak. I guess the Oak family continues to expand even though we don't really know the relationship between Grand Oak and Professor Oak. Now this dude doesn't have the usual 2D art that we've been looking at for the other characters, but I thought it was worth a mention as he does come from the continuation of Pokemon Bank. And Grand Oak's design is pretty fun, it does look like he stepped right out of the future. He's got long white hair that normally is meant to show someone as wise. The glasses are the most interesting part though, being shaped like two arrows crossing each other like the paths of two Pokemon being traded. And of course all the green everywhere is just the color that we normally see when it comes to Pokemon transferring or trading. This is probably a color meant to show growth or connectivity, or even could relate to the color that's normally associated with Wi-Fi being turned on. It just fits everything. But Grand Oak's glasses look like the future glasses that Doc Brown wore, so that's all I can think about. But that was an interesting little look back at the characters who would help us store and transfer Pokemon across the games. It's gonna feel a bit sad as we continue moving forward from one piece of hardware to another, leaving behind these already obscure characters only for them to fall into even further obscurity. I always just love how Pokemon would try to add little bits of lore and character into their side features while also trying their darndest to let us use the same Pokemon in just about every game. But let me know which of these characters is your favorite. Really, the moral at the end of the day is to make sure you have everything downloaded before the end of the month. I'm sure you've seen all the posts about it already, but, but I'm serious. Download Pokemon Bank right now. Thank you to every channel member for your continued support, especially the Great Gators, Cheeseburger Lasers, Gavnuts, Justin R, Cosmo Zero, Michaela, Mr. Pig Puncher, Phantom Pyro, Quago, Volity, and Pastel Blood. If you would like to support, get your name shouted out here as well as access to emotes and comments, live streams, and some early videos, you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter as well, but anyway, this has been GatorX, and I'll catch you all later. All new amazing Pokemon. New ways to battle and new legendary Pokemon. It's Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, exclusively for Nintendo 3DS and 2DS. Rated everyone.